ever since watching Leah's videos, she made me like religiously wear sunscreen. Um, before I would even wear sunscreen, I would have like such bad redness and discoloration problems and that cleared up so much. I feel like sometimes you guys are asking the questions you guys already know the answer for, which is, do we really need to apply sunscreen every single day? Yes, you do. And the very, very most important reason is sunscreen does help prevent skin cancer. This is something that shouldn't be overlooked. Ultraviolet radiation is a known human carcinogen, which means that it is going to develop melanoma or non-melanoma skin cancer on the surface of the skin. You don't really know if you're getting the skin cancer right now, but it will show in much later in your life. One interesting fact that I read is that more people develop skin cancer because of indoor tanning than develop lung cancer because of smoking. Indoor tanning uses a specific UV ray called UVA, and UVA is something that we really, really, really want to protect our skin from. In the past decade, from 2000, 2008 to 2018, the number of new melanoma cases diagnosed annually has increased by 53%. And with this rate, one out of five Americans will develop skin cancer by the age of 70. And Australia, please, please, please do not neglect the importance of sunscreen. Do not take this lightly. It is a very serious matter. And the reason number two is because sunscreen is probably the best anti-aging skincare that you will ever ever invest in. An estimated 90% of skin aging is caused by the sun. People who use sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher in a daily basis show 24% less skin aging than those who do not use sunscreen daily. And I think this really tells a lot, especially if you're someone who's applying retinol, retinoid, AHA, and also vitamin C. These are the actives that will make your skin a little bit more sun sensitive. It only makes sense for you to protect your really youthful, newly generated healthy skin cells so that that it is protected from the UV ray. And also UV rays, they do exacerbate your skin pigmentation. So if you're someone who's already applying and investing in brightening essences, hyperpigmentation serums, you have the answer. Another very underrated reason why you want to apply sunscreen is because it does help with acne. Your sebum, your oil that you secrete and generate throughout the day, once it reacts to UV ray, it kind of turns into a very gloopier and thicker kind of substance, which means that it has higher chance to clog the pore. So this process is called lipid peroxidation. So sunscreens really do help with your lipids from reacting with the UV ray. Now let's learn about the bad guys. There are three types of wavelengths in the ultraviolet radiation spectrum. There is UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC doesn't hit the planet Earth because it is filtered by the ozone layer, but if you are an astronaut, if you work in the space, UVC is something that's very, very detrimental. UVA and UVB is something that we talk a lot in the planet Earth, and UVA is recognized as aging ray because it has a longer wavelength. UVA ray not only penetrates the window but it really deeply penetrates into the skin up to the dermis layer so in dermis layer is where we store all the collagen and protein and these are the elements that decides the skin firmness but UVA comes into the party they mess up everything they break down the collagen which means that more skin aging happens UVB is basically the burning rate they are responsible for sunburns Sunscreen guide! SPF means sun protection factor, and this is the number that indicates the UVB protection, the burning ray that we just learned. But the higher the SPF number is, the better the UVB protection it has. So if you're going on a beach holiday, definitely amp up the SPF number. The testing method actually varies from country to country. That's what I recently learned. So one Korean sunscreen that has SPF 50 with the same formulation in the United States, when they get tested, it might be SPF 30. Then what indicates the UVA protection of the sunscreen? Screen. This is when the PA system, PPD rating, the UVA circle system, and also broad spectrum word comes in. So if you're living in an urban environment, I don't really think that you need like a higher SPF number, but you do want to very, very carefully consider what the PA rating is. So UVA exists in everywhere and even indoors in cloudy days rainy days snowy days it doesn't really matter uva is always always there there are mainly two different types of sunscreen and also three because there is also a hybrid number one is physical sunscreen mineral sunscreen or inorganic filters they are all referring to the same filter which is zinc oxide and titanium dioxide there are only two filters that falls into the physical sunscreen category the pros for mineral sunscreen is that it is 
non-negotiably better for extremely sensitive skin and also this is only for the United States because United States only allows a very 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 limited amount of chemical UV filters physical sunscreens can be milder and it can offer more photostable sun protection with the cons white thick pasty chalky really really unpleasant texture something that you really don't want to apply and apparently if there's a problem there's obviously a solution so they took the big size zinc oxide titanium dioxide chopped it up make it into a micro size and even smaller nano size so that it has better spreadability better application and almost sheer kind of transparency so it doesn't have that kind of white cast look so there are a lot of concerns from you guys regarding the nanoparticles of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide the majority of the literatures and the researches that were conducted regarding the skin penetration of nanoparticles they all conclude that nanoparticles of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide either do not penetrate or minimally penetrate the stratum corneum which is the outermost layer of our skin and this suggests the systemic absorption hence toxicity is highly unlikely. So again, you have your own opinion, which is totally fine. I am a huge fan of nanotechnology because it really allowed us to enjoy mineral sunscreen. It's something that encourages us to use it every single day because it offers sheer transparent layer. It blends in way nicely. And I think it's more important to apply enough of a sunscreen rather than applying like just a tiny bit of zinc oxide sunscreen because it has like, you know, unpleasant, gloopy, chalky texture. Moving on to chemical UV filters if you see a sunscreen ingredient that isn't zinc oxide or titanium dioxide it is just chemical uv filter some newer and also advanced chemical uv filters nowadays they also do physically block and scatter the uv rays as well the pros definitely for chemical uv filters is cosmetic elegance it goes on sheer and you wouldn't have that kind of like sticky or greasy residue and oftentimes it does offer better uva coverage than zinc oxide and titanium dioxide so i love a good chemical uv filter because it does offer better uva coverage now let's look at the con i can't generalize all chemical UV filters is going to have the same cons. There are some specific filters that also have a history of causing contact allergy, photosensitization, which means that your skin kind of gets irritated after applying sunscreen. And then when that sunscreen reacts to UV, that's when your skin gets the um, redness, irritation, and the reaction. And of course, with chemical UV filters, if there is a problem, there's also a solution. There's a variety of technology to kind of coat the chemical UV filter so it's not as kind of irritating and also the newer uv filters like tino syrup snm and also uvinol a plus these are the ones that have little to no contact allergy history or photosensitization history these are generally considered as mild another con is that some chemical uv filter can be photo unstable which basically means that once they kind of absorb a certain amount of uv they kind of die off in its power of protection but in this situation what a lot of chemists do is that they mix a bunch of different chemical UV filters so that it stabilizes one another. Each UV filter has different protection levels against UVA and also UVB coverage. So for instance, titanium dioxide, which is one of the mineral filters, it doesn't provide a full coverage against the UVA rate. That's why if I come across a sunscreen that only contains titanium dioxide, I would never ever ever pay my money for it. And I know a lot of industry sunscreens or a lot of Korean sunscreens, when they say they're mineral sunscreens, they are very biased to titanium dioxide. If you're going to buy a mineral sunscreen, make sure it has zinc oxide. Zinc oxide itself provides a full UVA coverage and also UVB protection as well. And if you are buying your sunscreen here in the United States, avobenzone is something that does offer a really really good coverage against the UVA and I know a lot of times a lot of people would say physical sunscreen is better than chemical sunscreen but to me sunscreen isn't something that should be labeled as black and white it's really pointless of a debate because a lot of times people don't apply enough mineral sunscreen because of its poor white casty chalky gloopy texture and it doesn't really layer well underneath the makeup so so as I always say the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you will enjoy using every single day regardless of which specific uv filters it use chemical sunscreen is it safe to use is it toxic so there are a lot of controversies going on regarding chemical sunscreens especially here in the united states so since last year 
this subject has been in my great interest so I started researching, asking all the chemists I know, asking all the biologists and dermatologists that I know about this very issue and me and my research team did a lot of extensive amount of research regarding all the studies that were published regarding the oxybenzone and specific chemical UV filters and how it gets penetrated beyond the skin. The biggest and the most controversial topic is hormone disruption. This is something that I'm still confused. All the professionals have different opinion on this, especially oxybenzo, which has to be one of the most problematic and the most controversial ingredient. A lot of studies are done in a very extreme condition with extreme amount of concentration of oxybenzo. A lot of studies do conclude that it doesn't reflect the real life situations. We don't have a solid consolidated answer. Sunscreen allergy is totally real and it's something that is more common than we actually think. Some group of people say that they can't apply chemical sunscreens because it is irritating. It's actually called photosensitization which means that once an ingredient is topically applied and it sees the sunlight, it reacts to it and it produces a substance that is kind of irritating to the skin. So the main three ingredients that seems to be the culprit of photoallergy are oxybenzone, octanoxate, octocrylin. So these are the three ingredients that gets mentioned a lot across a lot of studies and reports about contact allergy, photosensitization, and photoallergy. Another hot topic which is one of the most recent news is Hawaii banning oxybenzone octinoxate containing sunscreens. When people apply sunscreen and they go into the sea and swim, the substances get collected by the coral reef and it does affect the marine life. How much do we actually need to apply? So the general rule is you need to apply two milligrams per square meter. So that actually comes down to a lot more than you actually think and that you are actually applying. A lot of times we were applying probably 50% or less of the recommended amount. So for you to achieve the correct SPF that is stated on the product label, you need a lot more. I will link a very, very helpful video down below. I personally like to layer two layers of sunscreen so that I am ensuring that I'm applying more. Do we really need to reapply every two hours, every three hours? Yes, reapplication is is definitely recommended because a lot of sunscreens they do degrade in this photo protection throughout the entire day it's not gonna be like 10 hour proof 16 hour proof like your foundation and if you want to learn how to reapply over makeup I have a dedicated video on that so you guys can click that video right there. Thus higher percentage of certain UV filter guarantee higher SPF. The general rule is yes it does but you might have noticed that a lot of brands, even though they have the same SPF protection level, they have different percentages of zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and other UV filters ingredients. Now that is because not every UV filters are created equally. So even though they are all called zinc oxide, they offer a different level of protection. So this zinc oxide is not going to have an equal protection of this star-shaped zinc oxide. Do we need to wear sunscreen indoors? I highly I really encourage you to wear a lower SPF like SPF 15 or 10 but still with good broad spectrum or good UVA protection because UVA is still everywhere and we can't really avoid it. Do we need to apply sunscreen on our eye area? I highly recommend you to do it. The skin around the eye area is normally the thinnest. It is more prone to wrinkling, more aging, and more UV damage. Do we still need to double cleanse if we only use sunscreen? It really depends on what kind of sunscreen that you are using. A lot of sunscreens are designed to be washed off with just your second step cleanser. However, a lot of water resistant sunscreens that tends to be more adherent to the skin, those are going to be really hard to wash it off with just a cleanser. In that case, I highly encourage you to use a makeup remover, like a cleansing oil, cleansing balm, cleansing water even. I hope this video was informative and if it was, please, please, please share this video with that one friend in your life who refuses to wear sunscreen for life. And I'm sure this video will encourage her or him to apply sunscreen and be more we're mindful about the UV that we face in a daily basis, you know? And I am testing like 30 different mineral sunscreens because you guys requested it. So I'm preparing for that and make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel, Leah Yu, and hit that bell button because that's something that will notify you directly. If you still have remaining sunscreen questions, feel free to come over at Instagram at Leah Yu um, and I'll talk to you guys there. Bye!